Welcome back, my name is Carrie, and today I'm gonna to tell you how mobile home park residents might be able to buy their entire park and end up paying less in lot rent. Just over three weeks ago, I read an article about the former Sans Souci mobile home park converting to a resident-owned community co-op and posted a video with my opinion on the process. The internet truly is a magical place because shortly after posting that video, I was in contact with Mike, the president of the Sans Souci Cooperative and the president and founder of Rock USA, Paul Bradley. They both took time out of the day to answer questions on something I find to be a very interesting subject. The process of mobile home park residents purchasing their park and the financial impact it has on their lives. Full disclosure, I am not a stakeholder in either option. I like mobile home parks, but it's not like I own one. I'm learning more about resident-owned communities, but I have absolutely nothing to gain from mobile home parks converting to rocks. They were nice enough to share information with me, so now I'm gonna share it with you. What I'm gonna do is go into more detail on a couple of very important points, tell you the new information I got, and finally discuss whether or not I think converting to a resident-owned community is a good option. So let's do it. In the words of Michael Scott, it takes a big man to admit when he is wrong, and I am that big man. There are a few areas specific to the San Susi purchase that need to be revisited. In the original article that I read, it was stated that lot rents would be increased from 606 to 875 to allow for improvements to the park and support the financing. What the article didn't state is while the first increase is fixed at 750, the following years after that are conservative estimates based on the improvements and financing. Mike let me know that the budget for improvements on things like their new or refurbished wastewater treatment plant have been overestimated. I do the exact same thing when I'm budgeting for a project because it's a lot better to come in under budget and have money left over than it is to come in over budget and have to ask for more money. If I could tell you one thing for sure that people don't like, it's when you ask them for money to do a service and then you come back later and ask them for more money. Don't do it. Mike also informed me that they've applied for and are hopefully get a state grant, which if approved would lower everyone's rent by around $70 per month. So yes, they did have to increase rents in order to prevent rent increases, but in the long run under their control, the rent increases will be less than if it were owned as a for-profit investment. In addition to the email exchange I had with Paul Bradley, I also got a comment from the Rock USA YouTube channel. I assume that if you engage the services of Rock USA, you would also be required to use your financing company to finance the purchase. It turns out that isn't the case. Their financing company is there if you need it, but it's not a requirement of working with them. The other concern I had was what triggered the opportunity to purchase for the residents of San Susi, and this is where things really get interesting. One of my main concerns after reading the article was that the residents of San Susi might be more likely to overpay for their own park because they would be under the gun to get the deal done not knowing when they might have another chance to purchase their park. I thought the park owner notified the state of their intention to sell which then triggered the 90 day window for the residents of San Susi to organize, perform the due diligence and make an offer on the park. It turned out to be a lot more interesting than that. There was a third party offer on the mobile home park, but it wasn't just for San Susi. It turned out to be part of a portfolio sale that included 94 other parks, 95 parks total. There were around 10 other parks in Colorado included in the sale and only two of them went co-op. San Susi for 3.3 million and another one for 14 million. Imagine the total sale price of the entire portfolio. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. It's crazy. Before the residents of San Susi signed on the dotted line, the purchase price was supported by a leading appraiser in the mobile home park sector, pretty much alleviating all my concerns that they would have no choice but to pay a premium for their park. It's also worth mentioning that over 37 years and 276 resident owned communities that Rock USA has helped transition from a mobile home park, not one has ever resold or lost their community. So who all is this available to? The single biggest takeaway I had from talking with Mike and Paul was when I asked Mike if he thought the residents of San Susi would have been able to make this happen in transition from a mobile home park to a co-op without the help of Rock USA. When I asked him, he paused for a couple seconds and responded, 
No. So if you live in a park and like the idea of having more control over the land that your home is on, it's probably worth taking the time to learn more. Right now, the opportunity to purchase laws similar to Colorado exist in five other states, Oregon, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. So if there's a potential sale in any of those states, the residents of the park get first crack to go out and buy their own park. The process is complicated, so having a group like Rock USA involved could be the difference between getting it done or not. Will it cost money to have them involved in the conversion process? Yeah, of course it will. They're a nonprofit organization, but that doesn't mean they do it for free. They said it themselves that their service and mission cost money, and that's to be expected. That should be a surprise to no one. If a park wants to transition to a co-op and Rock USA is the difference between getting it done or not, then in my opinion, it's worth the money because the alternative could be trying to go it alone and not getting the deal done. I found it very interesting that of all the resident groups that decide to go through the due diligence phase of purchasing their park, only 5% vote no when it comes time to make a decision on whether to purchase a park and become a co-op or to stay a traditional mobile home park. Paul also mentioned that for any resident groups that want to find out if becoming a resident-owned community is the right decision for them, they have a fully forgivable loan that can be used to hire a co-op lawyer and third-party professionals like an engineer or an appraiser to help them assess the opportunity, the risks, and the financing involved in the purchase. Rock USA has a team that helps the resident groups through the due diligence process, kind of make it an easy step-by-step -step process, and they say their goal is to give the people a enough information to make a democratic decision. If the resident group uses the loan to get all the information they need to make a decision and vote no, the loan is written off. No harm, no foul, free money. If they vote yes, the loan is rolled into closing costs and effectively financed. Remember only 5% or one in 20 parks that go through the due diligence phase will vote no to becoming a rock. So they know the other 19 will most likely be on board with their program but a pretty good offer nonetheless. With all the new information I got from Mike and Paul, do I think this is a good option for residents of mobile home parks? I'm not an expert on resident-owned communities and we're really just scratching the surface on what would be involved in making that transition. So I'm going to approach this as if I was deciding which I would rather live in, strictly my own opinion for myself. Based on the information that in the United States, the average co-op is paying $32 less per month, $384 per year in lot rent. They usually raise rents less than 1% per year compared to the industry average of 3.9 and removing the risk of the land being sold for another purpose which is more likely in some states than others I would at the very least be interested in finding out exactly what transitioning from a park to a resident owned community meant for my monthly finances because on the surface there seems to be some decent benefits but you really want to break it down state by state because every state has different laws some favor the landlord some favor the residents so to really give a concrete answer you'd have to look at every state individually that's all i've got for today if you like manufactured home videos make sure to subscribe to my channel because i've got new ones coming out every single week thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one